So in Quilter's Creative Touch uh, Beginnings, Part 2, we're going to talk about the pantograph, doing a pantograph on your machine. And you may need to set your safe area. Remember to set it an inch to the left and an inch to the right of your machine, of your quilt. So the first thing we'll talk about is the buttons at the top where you select a pattern, you save your panto. Of course, these are self-explanatory, most of the buttons. Um, resets takes you back to the beginning. The X will delete your designs. You can put another one um, and so forth. And then over here to the right, some options. I believe we mentioned those in the previous screen. Um, um, video. Resume sewing session as if you have to leave and come back and you want to start where you left off. And then the plugins, um, which we discuss in another video as well. So I want to start with the ruler just to show you how that works. You can select um, using your machine, you can measure an area on your quilt. Sometimes the machine might give you different ruler uh, measurements than a ruler, so you, you always want to go by the machine. So, for instance, if I wanted to know the quilt width, I would, I would put my machine to the um, left of my quilt, which might be inside of my safe area. I would select this button here. Then I would move my machine to anywhere on the right of my quilt, and I would select this button. And then I'm going to get a measurement here that says my quilt is 63 inches wide. Okay, so what I use most is this one, which will give you the width and how far down you can sew. So I would, I would bring my machine over to the far left, and I'm actually putting it on the corner of my quilt. And then the bottom right, as far down as I can, and that's going to tell me the height and width here of my quilt. And... I can do apply measurement, and that measurement is shown on this screen, which tells me these are my boundaries right here. Um, now, you may want to go out of your boundary as long as you're within your safe area. You may want to stitch, oh, a half an inch uh, to the left or right of your quilt um, just to kind of go off the quilt, and that way you're not tying any knots inside your quilt. So the first thing is to select a pattern. I'm going to select this one. And it brings it in quite large, so naturally you want more of this pattern. So just click the plus sign and see how it's, I think, um, I think four is good. Okay, so now I've got four patterns up here, the same pattern. Um, and in this version, you can only select one pattern, like you couldn't have this Augusta here and another pattern here and a teddy bear here. So they all have to be the same. So um, here, uh, this this area here defines how big the pattern width is. You've got four patterns at 15.76 each, and they are all 12.45 high. And those equal these numbers down here as well. So then this column is about placement. And you'll watch as I select some of those. See how there's a gap between the patterns? You don't want that because then you would have a long stitch there. So you come here and select where these hearts are and see it close that gap. Now I still have some openings at the top and on the left and the bottom. So watch when I select the next one, it fills in some area over here. That's up to you if you want that or not. Um, the third option is back to where we were at the beginning. And then you can just keep playing with these to see what they do. 95% um, of the time you're going to select this one right here, so that it closes those gaps for you. And once you get that straight, now um, you can also change the horizontal fit, which doesn't really do much on this particular pattern, but you could play around with it to see what it does. If you want to change the size, you click size, and then you can use these buttons to shrink your size or make it larger. Okay. And right now it is set to move at medium height. You can change this. So let's, let's do jumbo just to show you. Now when I shrink it, see how much it shrunk all at once? Um, so you'll just play around with those as well. You can flip your design and rotate it, which really doesn't work with this, uh, a pantograph. So we'll just skip those for now. So now I want to click Sew in Zones. And you may get a message like that as well. 
Um, you will always want to save your zone session. I'm not going to save this for time, but um, you'll always want to save it because something will happen. The power will go out, something. You need to come back to it. So this is the same screen, similar to the screen we had with the um, teddy bear. And you'll see that everything in blue is going to stitch out. I have my beginning here and over to the right, my end. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So now I want to place this design in the center of my quilt. Now, I have this set on center because that's what I usually use. Um, you can change it in Zone Manager, but when you do this, um, it's going to ask you to reset the placement, which is fine. We'll, we'll do that just to show you what the different options are in Zone Manager. So in Zone Manager, if you have multiple zones, you would select them here. We only have one for this one. Um, the scale tells you um, how, how it's sized, how it can size your zone. Zone placement is where I want to talk about. I've got it set on center. If you click, it'll set on four point. So if this was the case, then when you uh, get ready to stitch this out, you have to select all four corners of where you want it to stitch. I'm going to put it back on center. Um, starting position, these two don't really matter at this point because we only have one row. Okay, so this is mainly what you would want to change here if you want to change that. So I'm going to move my machine to the very center of my quilt. I'm moving my machine, and this is where it is. So now I come down and I select this placement, and notice that the design moved a little. Well, it moved outside of my safe area, and I don't want that, so I'm going to move my machine over just a tad and re reposition, and there we go. So now at this point, you are, just like in, in the previous version, you're ready to sew. But the first thing you want to do is pull the bobbin, hold the thread, move it back, pull to the top, and click sew. And now your machine is going to start stitching. So uh, while that's stitching out, I'd like you to pay attention to this. See the area here and here under each pattern? When we go to stitch the next row of this pantograph, you want your pattern to come up into here to fill in that space, right? So um, when we get ready to place this design or mark it to be placed on the next screen when it's done sewing, um, you're going to need to remember that this, for instance, this leaf on the next set is going to come up into this area. So how far up there do you want that to come? And that's what you need to decide uh, before you continue. Uh, so first thing you do is you say finish zone. You've of course pulled your bobbin and knotted your thread there. So you say finish zone. Your machine is going to move to the very center. This center line is in line with this center up here where we originally placed. But that is not where you want your mark to be. Because if you do, that means that this leaf up here is going to appear right here. And you're going to have this gap in here. So, imagine this leaf and where you want it to be is probably about right here. So, right here is where you would want to make your mark. Whether you're using a piece of tape or taking a stitch or putting a pin, whatever. Make your mark. Then you select, select continue. You'll get another warning. You select yes. So, let's say I decided I wanted it right here. Okay. Now... Um, I usually put a piece of painter's tape under here with a dot on it, and that dot represents this area here. So I've got my tape on. I've, I've, I'm rolling my quilt so that the next area of my quilt goes up, and now that painter's tape is right here. Okay? And you saw where the center was. And I actually um, would have the painter's tape over here. Even though I'm representing here, I would have put it to the right. So now I'm ready to position again. And then you just sew. Uh, you pull your bob and sew again. And you continue to do this and roll your quilt until you get to the bottom. When you get to the very bottom, you may be short. Maybe your quilt ends about right here. So you put your machine right there. You click this. And see how it cut that off. So your machine is going to stop on that red line. And that's how you do it.